So, we have now learnt the basics of materials and material parameters. Let's now take a look at material functions. Material functions are pre-made parts of materials that you can use in actual materials. As an example of its use, say you want to blend between two different materials based on a texture. Uh, like you wanted to have uh, moss in the in the cracks of a rock, and you want to have rock in the non mossy in the no in the lot in the non cracky parts of a rock. Now you could either use uh, a, a value to linear, linearly interpret, interpolate between every single value, or you could use material functions. Material functions are better because it makes it look cleaner, and uh, it's also very 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 modular because it's easy to set up, you don't have to use anywhere near as much uh, you, once you've set it up once you can just use it over and over again so let's create a materials and textures and a material function we'll call this mat funk tute open it up you can see we have an output here this is what the, will be the output for the whole function uh, but we're not going to use uh, a simple uh, float or or vector or anything like that. We want to use an actual whole material output. So we'll right click and we'll make material attributes. So this allows us to create a whole material inside this function and then put a whole material or many whole materials inside of another material. Uh, so we'll just connect that to the output. And now for base color we want to make an input. Well we don't want to have connected yet, so it won't work. We want input, and we want to be down here. We want to change the input to a texture 2D. Then we need a preview for this texture 2D, so we'll drag one off and we'll get a texture object and we'll just make this grass ground. No, no, we'll make it moss and then we will turn this into a texture sample. So this will allow us to put it into base color. Now we want to copy all this and duplicate it. Drag it down here. We want to do the same thing uh, with moss n. So this way we can have a normal and we'll just drag this into normal now. Uh, we will call this one, this, fun uh, this input uh, diffuse And we will call this one normal. So now we have our material function set up. Let's save it. We'll exit out of that. And it will compile. And we'll just create the actual material that we're going to use uh, the material function in. We'll call this mat funk main shoot. We'll open this up. And you'll see this is just a normal material. Uh, so we want to use a height map uh, to lerp, uh, well, to uh, change between the two different materials in the cracks and in the high parts. So we will just get a uh, we will just get a texture uh, texture uh, where is it a texture two D. A texture sample, and we will put this in here, and then we'll uh, make this by default. Well, not by default. We'll make this height map rock. So I just got this height map by looking up rock height map on Google Images. Uh, so you can see it has white bits where it's rock, and it has um, it has darker bits in the places that are cracked. And so we aren't just going to use this. Uh, we first of all, uh, because it's black and white, we can just use any of these, and they'll all be the same value. Uh, but we're just going to use red, and we are going to multiply it uh, by a scalar. So this will allow us to a scalar parameter. This will allow us to make uh, instances of this material, and we can uh, we can change the fall off. Between the um, between the rock and the moss, or whatever you're using this for, 
and we'll default this to 1. So this is, when it's multiplied by 1, it will look exactly the same as it is now. Um, and we will then use this between a matte layer blend. We might, might use the standard one. Now, before we can actually use this to blend between the material functions, we need to go back into the material function. And we need to uh, deselect anything that's selected. We need to go down here and we need to do expose to library. This will allow us to actually use it in a material. So we get next and out of that. Now we can right click and we can go mat func tut and it will come up with one. And as you can see, we now have inputs for the normal map and the diffuse. So we'll just go texture object. And for the normal, uh, we will just make this. Uh, ground uh, moss, uh, or not D, we need to use N for the normal, and then texture object, and we'll use another one, we'll default this to moss D. So now we have that whole thing set up, and right now this is a full material uh, with a normal map and a texture, and we will put this into uh top material I believe is believe is the right one. We'll uh duplicate this and we'll bring the duplicate up here. And now this one will be for our rock. So we'll get uh basalt N and basalt D. And so now if we drag this into oh well, we can't drag it in because right now we're trying to drag a whole material into base color. So to get it to actually be able to use this, we need to click on this and we need to uh, we need to click on this. We need to go down here to the left and use material attributes. So you see that will turn it into a, a material as one node, and we can just drag this in now. So if we save this. You can see we have this uh, weird looking uh, texture uh, material here. Uh, so we will now go down here and we will uh, create an instance of it. We'll just leave it at that, at that and we'll apply it to here. And once it compiles, because we didn't save the actual material, once it compiles, just press G to get rid of that stuff, once it compiles, uh, well, you'll see that the material will come up. So you see we have this, uh, it looks a bit strange at the moment, uh, but we can go into the instance, and we can drag it over here so we can still see it. Go down, and we can change the intensity, and you can see we change the, uh, the fall off. Uh, but one thing we've got to, you can see it's becoming, it looks almost like it's becoming, uh, really really saturated and it is so if we want to get rid of that we need to go back into here and we want to first before we put it into alpha we want to clamp it so clamping means that it will scale down the value to between whatever we choose so 0 and 1 is what we have right now and that's what we want so we'll just drag that into alpha and uh, now if we well, it will look the same because we didn't save it. So if we save it and it will automatically apply it. And you'll see that it is no longer going uh, neon. But we, you, if you look at it closer, you can see we actually failed. We actually put the grass where the rock should be and we put the rock where the grass or the moss should be. So we will just go back into this and we can just uh, switch them around. And save it and apply it. And now it will look right. See? Look at that. So we have moss in the cracks and we have rock everywhere else. Uh, you could, of course, in the material functions, you could add more inputs for scale, uh, f uh, more scalar inputs for the specular and uh, stuff like that. So you can make the rock uh, really uh, like, j like with no specular at all, and you can make the moss uh, like very specular. So you can make it look th like the moss is wet, but the rock is very dry. Um, but yeah, that's up to you to uh, do. We'll probably go over this later in a more complex tutorial and make a really complex version of this. Uh, 
Uh, but if you'd like to learn more about UE4, then please join me next time.